Hello and welcome to Faith, Hope, Future. <laughs> this is a channel that I'm putting together really in response to a need that is among people who have either left Jehovah's Witnesses, perhaps disassociated, faded or been disfellowshipped uh, or for some other reason you have a JW background. Maybe you have, for example, family members that are witnesses and you might not have become a witness yourself, but it's left you with certain questions. What I'm going to offer, which is quite different, is I'm going to offer you logical reasoning based on nothing but scripture. And although we will touch on things that the organisation teaches, we won't be going back and obsessively looking at every detail of what they published in the Watchtower 1st of January 1967, because I believe that that's actually unhelpful and quite harmful and it keeps people in a very stagnant, negative place and a bitter place for years and years to keep going back looking at the lies. Once you realise that you've been taught lies, it's important to replace that with real truths and also positive things. We were done a lot of damage in the organisation. So this channel is really about healing. It's also about how to maintain your faith in God and his word, how to survive spiritually leaving the organisation. Having been out of the organisation myself for coming up to two years, um, in the first few months it was useful for me to look at some of the videos on YouTube, uh, look at some of the websites that kind of just highlight perhaps some of the erroneous teachings and some of the really shocking policies the organisation continues uh, to, to use and put in place that cause a lot of problems instrumental for my own personal kind of waking up and realizing I was being taught error and I was kind of living in error as well. Uh, a really big part of that was the Australia Royal Commission, which highlighted numerous problems with the organization. And the more I looked at it and more I reflected on Romans chapter 13, I came to the conclusion that policies that harm children and put them in danger and effectively protect child abusers um, and ways of worship and ministry that give child abusers free access to children like the ministry arrangements have been um, are just not, you know, they're not compatible with the God of love and they're not responsible and they're not loving. And also the outcomes uh, of the, the court case and outcomes of what the Australian government then made as recommendations uh, and the organisation then really refusing to play ball and cooperate for years until they were threatened with losing charitable status. And that's when there was a change because finances came into play. So the well-being of members and safeguarding and duty of care towards members and children in the congregations and young people in the congregations and those in the community who those abusers would then also have access to if they were left to roam free seemed to not come into it. And that was very shocking to me. But also the way the court cases played out, I could see God's hand in revealing to the authorities how the organisation does things. Uh, the governing body member who was subpoenaed making some statements that were really shocking for brothers and sisters to hear. Um, the governing body will tell us that they are God's only channel on earth. And this organisation is the only place you can have salvation and be saved and avoid dying at Armageddon. And yet under oath, he was quite happy to say that it would be um, presumptuous of him to make that claim in court, which is very interesting, isn't it? So they, he certainly doesn't believe in what they teach themselves to us. So that raised a lot of questions in my mind. And I came to the conclusion that not only does the organisation have very harmful policies, they have no humility when they're pulled up on it by governmental authorities, which are placed in position by God and as, as they are placed in position by God, he expects there to also be a cooperation with governmental authority. And Romans 13 says very clearly, you resist governmental authority, you're resisting God. So that made me um, more open-minded about looking at some of the teachings and what is really going on.